Welcome everybody. Thanks a lot for joining. My name is Joe with Vectra and I'm joined today by Dr. John Mancini, who's head of our threat detections here at Vectra. And we're going to take a few minutes and unpack the recent solar wind supply chain compromise. And more importantly, focus on what is Sunburst, what you should be looking for, and what you can do about it. So with that, I'm first going to introduce John and ask him to please explain what is Sunburst, John? Hi, Joe. Happy to talk to you and kind of break down a little bit of what we understand uh, on this very interesting attack. Um, so at the core here, Sunburst, uh, you know, as it was called by FireEye, was basically this kickoff point from uh, what started as an infection um, vector of a supply chain within basically a, a DLL that got added into solar winds um, within an update package. Anyone that had updated to this package of solar winds basically had a backdoor in play for the attackers to grab on and run basically a full-fledged network-based attack that could lead to the cloud. The actual sunburst piece itself uh, wasn't activated fully in every environment as far as we understand right now. It was selectively used by the attackers when they really wanted to kind of go for a full-fledged attack, but the hole was there for them to get in. And in terms of what they could do, I mean, this path basically allowed them full C2 control and the ability to download any binary they wanted. And so with Sunburst, because it was actually infected as part of the DLL, and, and as you mentioned, it allowed the attackers to attack whoever they wanted. If someone is analyzing their network telemetry, what kind of behavior would they see? Yeah, so, you know, in terms of the actual core behaviors, there's a lot of things that we, we kind of fairly strong. We know that they use kind of hidden tunnels, HTTPS tunnels, to do the remote control piece. This is pretty standard APT group tactic. Um, but from there, in order to progress, it basically looks like they had to do the, the traditional stuff of they had to do some recon to look for domain credentials if they wanted to move around. They had to do some lateral movement with those stolen credentials likely using things like scheduled tasks and other remote execution type procedures to move around to get to their objectives here. And we have some sense in some environments what those objectives are, getting to kind of places where they could get to SAML token forging uh, and interacting directly with kind of the, actually the cloud pieces of some of these environments and getting a hold of, of emails. Got it, so we've got hidden tunnels that they wanna look for. There's definitely gonna be some lateral movement um, we know that also it started with compromised hosts. Did they leverage the cloud at all? Yeah, so we are hearing in cases where kind of the full attacks played through that they moved to the cloud. They actually managed to get a hold of, of basically the ability to self sign their own certificates. So adding their own certificates in and then kind of ran basically a full attack of the Azure AD and O365 environments, doing everything like modifying federated trust to ensure long-term access, designating new privileges for accounts in those environments, and then going through emails and, and collecting data that way. Um, and we're not entirely sure of how, but there's a lot of ways for attackers at this point to, to kind of go through email from a kind of credential level path to get that data. Interesting, okay. And so any organization who's trying to stay protected against this sounds like one, there are some known techniques they should probably update indicators of compromise and any of their solutions that support that. But beyond IOCs, it sounds like the behavior was different. Actually, so it, it isn't different. Uh, the tools were different, but the behavior is stuff that we've in kind of the field seen before. You know, they, they use a, a cobalt strike tunnel. It was modified, but it, it is still the same core behavior remote control all these other pieces are still aligned with really other techniques and tactics that have been used at the core behavior level. It's just how they chose to do it in terms of tools that was different. Um, and so that's really why it's critical, you know, to look at the behavioral components associated with this attack to find the attacker. These IOCs, you know, if the attacker comes back and suddenly tries to activate on those same frame, same locations, yeah, you can alert in those and you should have visibility there. But going forward, it's critical to have the behavioral coverage so you can know if, if something goes on. Got it, got it. Okay, so it sounds like compromise a host, use a bunch of tactics, did a bunch of recon, 
they established some C2, they escalated privileges, probably compromised some accounts, moved up into the cloud, whether that was for data exfiltration, all these things uh, from a behavioral standpoint, that's all gonna come up um, within the network time tree metadata. So I think that we're pretty good there. What advice would you give to organizations looking now or in the future as it relates to supply chain attacks in general? Yeah, so it, it's critical, you know, we, we have a lot of software that we deploy in our environments that are business necessary. Those can be security or otherwise, but they're giving value, value to businesses. And the truth is nothing, nothing is fundamentally secure. So we have to take the approach of a trust but verify kind of view of the world. So if something does get compromised, you have to have some that's watching it to give you that second look at it to make sure that it is behaving the way it should. At the core here, as I said before, the, the attack that we saw here use new tools, but the techniques and the behavior are things that we've seen before, and we expect that to continue going forward. Awesome. Great. Well, listen, thanks a lot, John. I appreciate you taking a few minutes and unpacking this thing. We'll uh, continue to monitor as it changes and evolves because there's new information that's coming out daily, and I know a lot of people are, are very concerned with this going on. Um, so thank you very much for your time and really appreciate it. Happy to talk.